right, so this is my experimentation in plasma electrolytic deposition. Right now I'm pouring out some one, one liter of distilled water, 1,000 grams. And this is the development of oxide, nano-crystalline oxide layers on a conductive material, a conductive substrate. In this case, I'm using aluminum. I'm using three uh, centimeters squared of aluminum as my sample. And this is my fifth run here that I'm going to be demonstrating. It's been my best run, my largest build-up, and I've, it's probably because I ran it the longest. Uh, there's m many, many, many improvements and lots of different play and experimentation to do with this, um, but I figured I'd share it with s some of you guys, and it, hopefully it's helpful, and you can play along and do your own, um, your, don your own experiments with it. I'll link some research papers down below, too, in the description. Uh, so, now that I've warmed it up to help the solubility of my chemicals. Uh, I'm going to pour in, I'm going to put in 1.5 grams of our sodium carbonate and some glycerin, some anhydrous glycerin, or as anhydrous as you can find over the counter. So, <laughs> um, and the glycerin is 3 grams, by the way. So three, and this, and it's still very open. The chemistry is still pretty open. The variability, according according to uh, the size of your cell, um, how much voltage you're planning on using. There's lots of variables. Um, and again, I won't go over too much of that. You can look in the description below for the for some of the research that's been already been done. And, uh, I'm just adding my chemicals to the solution. And also, there is some other improvements. Uh, like a frequency modulation and a duty cycle that would help not only the efficiency but also the, the coatings. So uh, just for just for test purposes, I'm cleaning up the the aluminum. It's not really necessary, especially if you you're going to soak your soak your um, substrate in your solution, which is basically sodium has sodium hydroxide in it to build up a, a micro or a a surface layer of, of aluminum oxide. Uh, it's not necessary to, necessary to clean it, but I, I did it anyways just for to see if I can help improve the uh, consistent topology. And then there's before it's polished, and then after it's polished, you can see some scratches on it. So in my bath, the first two runs I did not do this, and now I started doing this. I've been getting a lot better results. Basically, I'm just equalizing the temperature, and, and it would be best, uh, another area for improvement would be a heat exchanger, it would be best to use a heat exchanger in this and keep the temperature roughly between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius. And here is the process in action, and this is called micro arc oxidization, or plasma electrolytic oxidization, um, but its broad term is plasma electrolytic deposition, and this happens on the surface of the anode. So it's anodotic uh, plasma deposition, and um, the it's, it's kind of cool, but you don't you can't really notice it unless you turn down the lights. So uh, some people might have already done this if they were really pumping some power into their into their ele uh, hydrogen producing electrolytic cells. And I also put some PTFE tape on the top just to kind of prevent the alligator clip from leaching in. And in this run. I, and probably my second, yeah, it was my second run, I did this, and this, the results on this one was, were much better, but I added a, 10 milliliters, approximately 10 milliliters of distilled water with uh, my exfoliated graphite, one gram of exfoliated graphite. You can see it got pretty dark. Still, kind of see it through the through the cloud, and um, again, frequency modulation and duty cycle, or even using a higher. You can use AC. Um, what's called bipolar AC, and that that is shown to give the best results according to most research. And limiting the limiting the uh, negative cycle about 20% less than the positive, so 80-20, and then. Um, I'm running this across a 1.1 ohm resistor, so we're roughly at about 8.2 amps, which is quite power hungry right now. 
but again, this can all be improved upon and you create better surface surf, surface topology with a different, with a different apparatus, a different ra reactor designs. It's just kind of what direction I want to take this first. And this is leading into a whole plethora. I like saying that word, plethora. It's leading into a whole bunch of different uh, experiments coming off this uh, on making crystalline structures and stuff like that, uh, nanocrystalline structures in particular. So this is my, when I shut it off, I noticed that there was a, uh, an after heat effect. And my hypothesis is that it's from uh, like a convection, convection, or anecdotic heating uh, circulatory phenomenon that happens when you have the electrolytic cell running. Uh, it's, it's actually stirring the solution according to, you know, the, the hydrodynamic reaction that's happening in the cell. And then when you shut it off, uh, the heat then rises, especially with the, with the graphite solution, the heat, the heat will rise up past the thermometer, giving us this effect. That's my strongest hypothesis, but there's many others that I have. And this is just the surface area to the naked eye, and it's uh, pretty, pretty different looking. You can see little carbon spots on it, which is different than like some of those other ones. You can see I have a couple other samples of just a very small layer of oxidization. And I ran this one for 15 minutes about five minutes on, and, and then I had to wait for the temperature to equalize because so I don't have any heat exchanger. And right here, I'm just checking the uh, conductivity, and you can see if I push really hard, I'll get to the aluminum surface. So I can still work on the strength of the oxide layer a little bit. But you can f kind of feel when you push down on the leads and breaking the, breaking the surface, the surface area, the boundary layer of it. Here is just a polished piece of aluminum from my be before. You can see some of the surface scratches. And pretty obvious. And I don't have the best of measuring equipment to really get in a close and look at this. But many other people have in the past. XRM and electron scanning electron microscopes and such. This is the actual after coating effect. You can see some uh, some large crystal ridges and uh, really interesting topology. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a quick run through. I know it was fast. Uh, I've been working on this a lot among, amongst other things, but uh, I just want to share this with you guys. I hope you can get something out of it. And much love to you all. Take care.